Welcome to Teens on Topic. I'm your host, Emma Arnson, and today I'm joined by... Sam Sheridan. Uh, Hattie Shaw. Issa Shake. Today we have a very interesting and pertinent issue to talk about, but first, let's hear what the people of Davis have to say about it. Um, how do you feel about Democrats pursuing impeachment procedures with Trump at this time? I think that would be a big mistake. First of all, look at who the vice president is. That would be a nightmare. And then, I think it would be hard for Democrat to win the 2020 election if they impeach Trump now. That's my opinion. Some people say that if Trump like successfully defends the impeachment, it could actually give him like motivation going into the 2020 election. What do you feel about that? I think that's absolutely true. Absolutely true. No, I think that would be the worst mistake we could make, and I've thought that from the very beginning. Do you still believe that um, he's a criminal for some of the obstruction that he's accused of? He is such a criminal. He, he lies, he cheats, he steals. He is terrible. He is a criminal for every reason you could think of. I mean, he's a child abuser. He's a, he's a pedophile. Give me a break. He's everything. Um, at this point, I have kind of lost faith in our government, and um, that's also with if they're going to impeach him or not. Would I like to see it done? Yes, ultimately. Um, but then also I fear like a Pence uprising, because honestly I believe he's probably the biggest threat to look out for, kind of that hidden threat. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping they do, but at the same time also fear it. So I guess I'll just have to wait and see what happens. Yes, absolutely. Do you say more? <laughs> for lots of reasons, um, basically just because he's broken the law. Definitely. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, a lot of people are saying that if it was anybody else, they'd be in jail. So the president shouldn't be above that. Right, and definitely obstructed justice. Um, so I think there's enough evidence to at least start the impeachment proceedings, definitely. Well, I don't see why, why they would, because they, they're not going to make it into this term. So I just think they get a long ways away if they try to impeach him. That's my thought on that. Do you think he's guilty of the obstruction that he's accused of? Well, you know, if you listen to the media, you have to kind of form your own opinion. Because the media... We're not always hearing the truth, but for some reason he got voted in. So I don't know. I mean, I don't hate the guy. I don't, I'm not saying I love the guy, but he's probably doing like any other president does. It's common sense, you know. I know people hate him, and they, see, but I I can still go to go to the store. I, I can still come home. I can, you know, I see gas going up. I see this going up and all that. But what are you going to do? He's just like like I say, any other president is trying to do his job. I don't hate anybody. I'm not saying I like some of the things you hear, but we're not there. We just listen to what we hear, right? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, those were some very interesting opinions that seemed to vary, but what did you guys think on what they had to say? I was just really glad to hear the perspective of that lady in the first <laughs> interview. I didn't know he was a pedophile. So <laughs> yeah. to have. I don't know like what... On. Exactly, she was referencing. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I believe her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Isa, how do you feel about it? Well, I, I, I think it was interesting to see everybody try to find a crime uh, to pin an impeachment on. It's really interesting the way that we've made impeachment out to be like, you know, you know when you talk about high crimes and misdemeanors, that initially did not mean an actual crime, like a jailable crime. It meant whatever Congress found to be a crime, right? Yeah. So if... Uh, the real question of impeachment isn't how provable the obstruction of justice is. It, it isn't that provable. It's that do they have the votes in Congress and is Congress willing to take that risk? And going into 2020, Nancy Pelosi, she's a smart political mind. She knows that if they impeach Donald Trump, he will not be acquitted by the Senate. He will remain president. Uh, and that will, I mean, it's really likely that that helps him, that bolsters his base and the Republican base to go out and vote for Donald Trump against um, the Democrats. Yeah, like, obviously he's not the world's uh, best man, but he definitely, like, it's definitely at this point not a smart political move, I feel like, to, to try and proceed with impeachment, especially this late in the game. So I, I understand 
why um, you would just to like get them out of office, but uh, like putting Mike Pence there and then also um, like just fully setting up another Republican to win in 2020 is is not not a smart move for the Democrats at this point, I don't think. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a little too close to the next election to try to do this. And I think that it definitely the Democrats would have a greater chance of just voting him out in the 2020 election than have him be impeached and then have Mike Pence. And I think that'd make a lot of people very angry. And I think that would give inspiration to a lot of people to go out and vote for him again. I mean, we're mentioning mm -hmm. the vice president a lot. The fact of the matter is that this impeachment will not happen, even if Democrats um, do decide to do this in the House, which I'm very skeptical of. The Republicans in the Senate will not <laughs> convict the president. Yes. Um, also, I find an inconsistency in a lot of people um, who are, or they say they're scared, I'm sure that they might be, um, that they're scared about the unprecedentedness or how unprecedented the actions of this president are and how crazy this presidential term is. Uh, and on the other hand, they say that Mike Pence would be worse, which I think is kind of ridiculous. Mike Pence might, um, might disagree with every position you hold, but he's a conventional politician, I think, um, as opposed to our president right now. Of course, we all agree. That's good news. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we're all kind of on the same page. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, the guy made kind of a good point of, like, I'm still able to, like, go to the store and go home every day. Um, uh, and I guess that's, like, that's true, but I, I don't know. I don't think that, like, impeaching Donald Trump would, like, take down, like, the, the political machine the way people, like, kind of want it to. I think the way to do that is like setting up like strong um, Democratic candidates for um, the upcoming 2020 elections. Do you think impeachment in any situation is a good cause? I know that some people have the idea that because a person is a president, then they should be whatever they do is by default legal. Well, yeah. I, I, again, I think there's a distinction between legal and impeachable, right? Mm -hmm. So um, if you look at the impeach articles of impeachment for Andrew Johnson, one of our worst presidents, um, Article 10 was he's disrespected Congress, right? So impeachment, uh, again, as outlined in the Federalist Papers, isn't a thing where it's like, oh, he's done obstruction of justice or he's done things with children. <laughs> it's that Congress does not like the thing that they're doing. That's what impeachment. That's why Congress is a superior branch of government. Um, but I think impeachment, yeah, definitely is a. Good, it, it's always a good thing to have Congress keeping in check the most powerful man uh, in the country. I think it's always great that they can wield this power um, if the person goes out of step, if they betray the Constitution, if they betray our country. Yeah, like having those checks and balances in place. I feel like is uh, is pretty important. So I don't think that like you should like Congress shouldn't be allowed to uh, impeach the president if if need be. I know. I think. Did you listen to Slow Burn about Bill Clinton's impeachment process? All right. No one listened to that. Podcast. Did you? I was talking to you. <laughs> oh, yeah, did you? No, I oh, well, I listened to it. And the, yeah, I think after listening to that, I think that the the process that's in place is definitely like like should be there and it's important that it is there. That's fine. I think throughout the Mueller investigation, there's been this sort of muddying. Um, I think we've seen this from critics of the investigation that you shouldn't have executive branch investigators basically doing the fact finding for an impeachment, which is what you kind of saw during the uh, Clinton impeachment with Ken Starr. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. ba basically with the Mueller impeachment, what a lot of people saw this was, was that this is I mean, he's, if you look at the chain of the Department of Justice, Mueller reports to Rosenstein, who reports to now Barr, who reports to the president, right? You shouldn't have somebody who's under the president fact-finding against the president for Congress for an impeachment. Um, and so a lot of people thought that Congress should have been the people who are investigating this, because with Congress, they don't have these restraints that the investigator does, right? Congress um, makes their own intentions, and based on their politicized or not intentions, they can go find facts. Um, and I think... That's really muddied the situation that we're in right now, just because Mueller couldn't make a recommendation on anything, uh, not that he should have, but the fact that these facts were from the executive branch, rather than coming from Congress where they could have, you know, been building their own case in the House Judiciary Committee or wherever else. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, going in a sort of different direction, 
Do you guys have any hypothesis of what will happen in the upcoming presidential election? The sweet meteor of death will kill us all. <laughs> um, Bernie Sanders, baby. Just kidding. I'm, I would bet for Trump. You want to yeah. bet right now? I'll pay ten. I mean, <laughs> I mean, um, I don't really want to ever be in a situation where I'm obligated to give you ten dollars. But um, <laughs> no, I think, like genuinely, I think just Trump because he's running for re-election might have it um, for 2020. But I think it's all up to who the Democrats nominate, and we're so far away. I mean, uh, what is it, 24 candidates? Uh, New York Mayor Bill de Blasio is now in the race. But there are so many candidates, uh, and we're all more than half a year away from the Iowa caucuses. So many of these candidates will have dropped out by then. Uh, we have no idea who's going to be at the top right now. Right now we see uh, Vice President Biden and Senator Sanders and Pete Buttigieg, for some reason, at the top. I kind of um, like him. I think he's kind of cool. I don't know. I don't really know that much about him, but... I think everybody thinks he's kind of cool. Um, yeah, I think he's kind of cool. I don't know. I just... Who's that guy who's running Democrat is going to give everybody a thousand? Oh, Andrew Yeah, Gang. Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang. And all these people are qualifying for the debates, which is going to be crazy. Um, but Yang, I literally... He's going to give us all a thousand dollars. Kirsten Gillibrand will not be the Democratic nominee, but were she the nominee, Donald Trump would be president. That, I mean, but the equation could look completely different were it, um, Bi uh, were it Biden or Klobuchar, um, Bullock even. Really? Yeah. I think Biden's d done. I think he's done. After, like, the, the like, simple accusations of him being, like, somewhat predatorial towards women, I think he's knocked out. I don't think that's a fair way to characterize it, somewhat predatorial. <laughs> like, I mean, like, his, like, cr like he, that he was, like, creepy towards women, I think. That he's, like, like, creepy towards everybody. He's, like, a weird old guy, you know? You can't embrace it like Trump does. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I agree. I, I think uh, Joe Biden's public image has somewhat been sullied. Like, I, I don't think... I mean, the fact of the matter is, while he was vice president, the entire, uh, you know, the Tea Party uh, Twitterati or social media would love putting up these photos of him with... Um, you know, Ash Carter's wife or something. It's just the way that he is. He's into tactile politics, as the New York Times called, uh, New York Times called it. Um, I don't think that's going to hurt his chances. You, you can see he's increasingly staying at the top of the race right now. I know we're so far away, but still, uh, it's not hurting him. Were it to hurt him, it would hurt him in the nomination race, not in the general election for sure. That makes sense, yes. I think the oldness is the problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. he's old. He's yeah. Old. Andrew Yang's not that old. Andrew Yang's <laughs> not that old. He's going to give me $1,000 a month. That's the only thing I know about him. Yang Gang. All right. Well, uh, thank you all for joining us on this very exciting episode. And be sure to join us next week.